I have randomly selected eight math books from my collection to show you today in this video. These are math books that will help you become a math wizard. Some of these books are better than others, and some of them are more basic than others. Some of them are very, very advanced. In any case, we're going to take a quick look at these books so you can see what they're about and if they're good books for you. I am The Math Sorcerer and this is my YouTube channel. If you are new here, consider hitting subscribe today. This is probably the most famous real analysis book in the entire world. It's called Real and Complex Analysis and it was written by Walter Rudin. Most people consider this to be a very, very famous book. So this book is used by graduate students typically in their first year and it's used for two semesters in the US. Most grad students will take a full year of mathematical analysis. So that's about 18 weeks for the first course and 18 weeks for the second course. And that would be like a fall and spring semester or something like that. That's typically how it works in colleges. So very high level. It requires a lot of knowledge. Again, typically people who study this already have math degrees. That doesn't mean that you can't jump into it and try to learn. I definitely think that this is a book that belongs on the shelf of every math collector. The biggest downside of this book is that it's not extraordinarily inexpensive, right? It does cost some money, and that's because it's such a famous book. I really think that that helps maintain its value over time. This one is a lot more elementary than Rudin's book. It's called Elements of Real Analysis, and it was written by David A. Sprecher. So this is a much more introductory book, but at the same time, it does have some more advanced topics. Let me show you quickly the table of contents so you can see exactly what's in this book. So it starts with sets and functions, the rational numbers, the real line, and then the structure of point sets, functions of a real variable, and then you see it talks about differentiability, continuous functions, and it even does measure and integration and Fourier series. So it does have more advanced topics than you know, a lot of other analysis books. Yeah, it's quite an interesting book. This is a really nice copy of Differential Equations by H.S. Baer. This copy still has the dusk jacket. The dust jacket is this cover that you see on the book. And typically books with dust jackets are worth more. By H.S. Baer, University of Washington. Cool, right? S. Saragan, 65. Differential Equations. Yeah, wow, wow, this book is in phenomenal condition. And this book is basically a book on introductory differential equations. So you can use this book to actually learn differential equations on your own. In order to study something like this, you would need to know calculus. So it starts with first order equations, special methods for first order equations, linear equations, special methods for linear equations, the Laplace transform, let's turn the page, see what else we have over here. Then we have Picard's Existence Theorem and Systems of Equations. So it does have some interesting topics. Um, there's always things in these older differential equations books that you don't find in new books. And there's always things in new books that you don't find in older books. One of the things uh, I like about differential equations books is that I've taught differential equations uh, you know, in the past. And I taught it many times. And so... I'm really, really familiar with what's being taught in colleges today, and it's really interesting to see like how there's a shift in topics. You know, you'll have certain things that'll show up in new books that didn't show up in the past, and certain things that are kind of just forgotten and not even taught anymore. Also, the explanations are a little bit different. This is a good book for self-study. It's a classic, Differential Equations by Bear. Yeah, it's a really nice book. This book is pretty hard to get, I think. It's Franz, General Topology. So it's written by Franz, and I've read small portions of this book. It's certainly a good book on topology. Um, I did find some typos in the book, but oh, it smells so good. I'm sorry, I just have to smell it here. Oh, that is incredible. It smells so amazing. My copy smells so good. So Wolfgang Franz, Professor of Mathematics. What a cool name, right? Wolfgang, Wolfgang, Wolfgang. Theory of General Topological Spaces, so just the basic introduction to topology, relative topology, connectivity, density, coarse and fine topologies, bases. So basic basic intro to topology book, right? That's what this is. And then here, you see you get some more stuff. It talks about Hausdorff spaces. Those are also called T2 spaces. Compact sets, metric spaces. Okay, you get some metric space stuff. And then rudiments of dimension theory, so... 
Not something that you often see in some other uh, topology books, but nice book. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool book if you can find it. I'll try to leave links in the description to all of these books. This one has a really cool cover. This is Introduction to Real Analysis, and let's open it up. It's by Gemignani. Yeah, and inside we have Treasures. Ooh, what's this? 1976. Wow, really, really old. Let's take a look at some of these topics. There's the preface. So it starts with sets and functions. So very, very basic, the real numbers, basic topology of real numbers. So this is even more elementary than uh, the, the elements book, which we looked at earlier, right? So sequences in series, the derivative, the Riemann integral, and sequences and series of functions. So very, very basic book. Um, this book doesn't have answers to the exercises, but it's still a good book because it's a solid math book and it's clean. I've looked at it and I think it's pretty good. I don't know um, if you can still get it, but yeah, I like it for the size too, because you know, when you sit down and you, and you read a book like this and you make it through you know, 10 pages, you're like, ah, oh, 10 pages, but 10 pages in a math book like this, uh, that, that's, that's a lot of mathematics. Here's a really interesting book on functional analysis. So functional analysis is a very tough subject. And in order to tackle this book, honestly, you do want to know a considerable amount of mathematics. Let me show you why. Let me show you the contents of this book. It's a great book. And I'm not saying you can't read it even if you don't know the math. I don't believe in that. I believe that everyone should always try to learn stuff, no matter how hard it is. You never know what you're gonna understand. And even if you don't fully get it, just being exposed to higher level math, I think makes you better. Topological linear spaces, locally convex spaces, Bonnock spaces, integration and measure, Hilbert space, and then commutative Bonnock algebras and a spectral theorem. So this is something that you, again, would wanna know a lot of math. You know, you'd probably wanna know some topology before jumping into this, um, some analysis. You know, you ideally want to be finishing up your math degree, so you wanna know a ton of math, or you want to have a math degree already. I actually took a class in functional analysis uh, in grad school. But when I took it, I mean, I had already had a lot of math, including graduate classes. So it was actually, I don't want to say it's like an easy subject, but it was a very pleasant class and it was a very pleasant experience for me. You know, I got an A. It was a pretty easy class because a lot of the material uh, was reviewed. There was a lot of new stuff, but, you know, the flavor of the proofs and stuff. Once you do a lot of analysis and stuff and you do a lot of stuff with metric spaces and you just learn a lot of math, you do some topology, you learn how to write proofs, you get to something like this and it's a little bit more manageable. It makes your journey a little bit easier. Yeah, Functional Analysis by Edward W. Packle. This is a very simple, basic book on complex variables for mathematics and engineering. This one's by John H. Matthews. I love the cover of this book. This is an 80s book. It's from the 80s. I believe the first printing was 82. Let me see. If I'm right, I'm going to feel like a champion for actually remembering that. Uh, yes, the first printing <laughs> is 82, and this must be the second edition because it's 88. Does it say anywhere? Yep, second edition. So this is the second edition. So this is a subject that you can tackle, so you can understand this book. Uh, you just need some calculus, right? So if you know some calculus, you can do it. Ideally, just know how to take partial derivatives. You know, the more multivariable calculus you know, the better, but honestly, you're not going to use a lot of that at the beginning. It's very, very basic. So this is a subject that's very accessible to people, complex variables, and this is a pretty good book. Um, so yeah, so it starts with really basic stuff, as you can see here, complex numbers, complex functions, analytic and harmonic functions, elementary functions, complex integration, series representations, residue theory, and then conformal mapping, and then applications of harmonic functions. It also has answers to selected problems, and it doesn't have a ton of answers, but it does have some answers. Let me just show you so you see exactly what I'm talking about. And that's always what happens with these books, and it's really unfortunate, but it's just the way the world is. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you do get some answers, but you don't get all of them, right? So that is unfortunate, but it's what we have. So this is a very accessible subject. This is much easier than like real analysis, aka advanced calculus, because it's just easier, right? Like if you take an advanced calculus class, everything is proof-based. Now, I'm not saying there's no proofs in this, right? There's a lot of proofs, but like it's just easier. There's less proofs. There's a lot of computation stuff. And the results are cooler. Like you can spend all this time going through like the construction of the real numbers and what do you get? You get the real numbers, great, they're amazing, but they're the real numbers. Here, you get some other stuff that's a little bit different and I think it's a little bit more fun. You know, it's a little bit more fun. So complex variables is a subject that I think is interesting and is a little bit more fun. This is a pretty good book. It has, it has a decent number of answers. 
It's standard, you know, it's got a lot of stuff. I think it's worth having. I think it's worth having as many complex variables books as you can afford. So yeah, I like it. It's the one by Matthews. Elementary Number Theory and Its Applications by Kenneth H. Rosin. So this is a number theory book. This is actually a, a subject that I never studied in college. So I just know some number theory from reading, from reading on my own and then from just being exposed to number theory from other college courses. So Rosin uh, has written other books. I have his Discrete Math book, which is pretty good. I mean, it's a pretty tough read and it's, it's a math book. This one's also pretty good, but it's still, you know, a pretty tough read. It's for beginners, but number theory is still tough. You know, you still have to learn it. Still takes effort. Um, let me just show you what's in it. I, I, I consider this like a modern book. Um, I don't think it's super old. Let's see how old it is. I feel like the layout is a little bit, yeah, 2000. So at least it's from this century, you know? So, so that's, yeah. Let's, let's take a look at the contents here so you can see. So number theory is something that you can study once you know how to write like basic proofs. If you know how to write uh, basic proofs, then number theory is a subject that you can study. Oh, cryptology. I actually took a course in graduate school on cryptography. Primitive roots. Yeah, so number theory, again, it's one of those things that, you know, as long as you can write proofs and you've got the time, you're good. Answers to odd numbered exercises, page 553. Let's take a look at that. Let's see what's going on there because I am very impressed, right? Look at that. Look at that. Full answers, right? So very nice book on number theory. I've spent some time with this book. I haven't spent a ton of time with this book. Um, I bought this book because someone left a comment about it, actually. I got this book, it's been, it's been I haven't had it for over a year, this book. This is one of my newer books. So I'm still investigating it and looking at it. But so far, I like it. And from what I've read and, and looked at, it seems to be a pretty good choice for number theory. So those are some really interesting books that I just picked at random that I wanted to show you today because I think they're cool. I thought, let me just make a video. Let me just grab some books and see what I got. And honestly, it's really interesting how they're all, they're all different, right? Even the analysis books are quite different. So we've got Fromm's General Topology. This is like an intro to topology book. Introduction to Real Analysis. This is like a beginner level intro to real analysis book. Differential Equations by Bayer, just a standard DE book. Elements of Real Analysis. This is an intro to analysis book, but it's got some more advanced topics. And I feel like it's written on a higher level than this one for sure, right? Definitely more advanced. This one's even more advanced than this one. This is Real and Complex by Rudin. Classic book. A hardcore, simple, short, clean functional analysis book. I like it. A book on complex variables by Matthews and Rosin's number theory book. So really cool that like they're all very different and it just goes to show sometimes when you pick things at random, uh, it works out. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, good luck, take care. And if you're struggling with math, just keep doing it right. Keep doing it right. You will get better. It just takes time. Good luck.